Hey Hollywood Lifers, it's Chloe here in the New York office and I have a very special guest with me today. Her name is Tia Carrer. You might recognize her from a little movie called Wayne's World, but she's not here to talk about that. She's actually here to talk about a recent Grammy nomination, which this one is your fourth. My fourth, yeah. So tell us a little bit about that. What got you into music? Um, well, it's, it's kind of funny. I mean, this record, Huana Ke Aloha, it's a Hawaiian record, um, but I, um, it's a, a friend that I've known since I was 14 years old. Uh, and we were doing music together in jazz orchestra and just decided to do music that we love, you know, Hawaiian music that we love. But tell me though, were you surprised about this nomination? Because four, I mean, that's a lot. You must be so flattered, so. I'm so excited, I mean, it, it's just, I'm the luckiest girl in the world. I mean, especially after doing movies for 20 something years, um, and then to be recognized for something that I love, which is singing. I mean, I could sing in a shower, I could sing, you know, in a karaoke bar in the corner, and be happy, but to be able to be recognized by the Recording Academy and get nominated and to have won a Grammy, it's it's just it's, just, it's everything I've ever dreamed of. So. What is it like winning a Grammy? I'm sure that all the aspiring musicians at home, what is it like? It's a front row seat at the best concert of the year. Um, I actually hosted, co-hosted this past year and the year before, and I gave Colby Calais her, her Grammy and A.R. Rahman, the, who did the soundtrack for um, Slumdog Millionaire. I gave David Guetta, who's a very famous French DJ, um, th their Grammy. So it was just as cool giving people their Grammys as it was receiving one. It was so shocking. I was literally backstage because I was hosting. I was in my gown, had my shoes off. I was like at the craft service table eating something or whatever. They said, you better go, you're your categories. I go, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna win. And then when they called my name, I swear, I was so in shock. But so, so tell me a little bit about this album right here. So this is a record called Huana Ke Aloha. Uh, Aloha overflows abundantly and it's um, uh, the basis of the of the tunes, uh, the tune sources are classical music. Brahms Lullaby, yeah, Pathetique Sonata by Beethoven. So the bass music is sort of reworked by my musical partner Daniel Ho who is a genius um, and, uh, and then all new Hawaiian lyrics by uh, a PhD in Hawaiian language Amy Stillman. So it's um, it's it's a real you know amalgam you know it's sort of genre bending, um, but uh, I'm really proud of it. it. Sounds beautiful. Well, so is there anyone that you would want to collaborate with in the music industry? Oh God, mm -hmm. I mean, she's Louise. It's uh, I feel so fortunate to have you know done the things that I've done and doing the things that I'm doing. Um, to ask for anything more, I almost feel like it's, you know, shut up, girl, what are you talking about? You should be so thankful. Um, but, I mean, I've gotten to meet and work at Real World Studios, you know, where Peter Gabriel is in England, and, I mean, he's just amazing. Of course, that would be a dream. Um, there's just so many people. Are there any? So, now, speaking we'll of Scream, Wayne's World, which is really was your first big break. Yeah. Okay. Do you keep in touch with any of your co-stars, or um, I is saw that part, part of your life you kind of... It's, it's kind of hard. Everybody's so busy, you know. Everybody's moving targets. And um, But I, I ran into Dana Carvey at uh, John Lovett's Comedy Club opening recently, and that was really nice because I hadn't seen him in years. And Mike Myers, I always see him intermittently at different social events and stuff. But.